thank you for joining us once more for news on African Free Press Television. My name is Leo Okep and these are the stories we're tracking for you this morning. A former head of service in Nigeria has pleaded not guilty to a two-count charge of fraud and criminal conversation of 900 million naira. Mr. Steve Orasani is alleged to have committed the crime while he held sway as chairman of Presidential Committee on Financial Action Task Force. Having taken his plea on Tuesday, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, asked for a letter date to commence the trial. The counsel to Mr. Arasanya, however, rejected the application and asked the court to commence with the trial immediately. The counsel to EFCC then asked for a stand down of the case to give the commission time to prepare and return back to court. The EFCC on March 8 invited the former head of service for questioning over allegations of corruption and obtaining money by false pretense. The Ekiti state governor Ayodele Fayoshi accused President Muhammad Buhari of focusing on issues pertaining to other countries rather than dealing with the problems facing Nigeria. In a statement signed by his special assistant on public communications and new media, Fayoshi urged the president to pay more attention to security and economic issues affecting Nigeria, describing his condemnation of Sunday's terrorist attack on the Grand Bassam Resort in Cote d'Ivoire as hypocritical and demonstration of insensitivity to the plight of Nigerians. He noted that it was strange that President Buhari was more concerned with the killings of 16 people in Cote d'Ivoire than the Fulani headsman's mother of over 300 citizens of Nigeria. Mr. Fayashi said it was alarming that even when the former Senate President David Mark was attacked by the Fulani headsman last Saturday, when he went on inspection of eight communities destroyed by the Fulani headsman, there was no reaction from the President condemning the terror attack. And meanwhile, Nigeria's Senate on Tuesday blocked a bill seeking equal marital rights for women. The bill titled Gender Parity and Prohibition of Violence Against Women was presented by Abiodu Olujimi uh, representing Ikiti South during the Senate's plenary session. According to Mrs. Olujimi, uh, the bill would seek equal rights for women in marriage, education, and job. She said if the bill was passed, a widow in Nigeria would automatically become the custodian of her children in the event of the death of her husband and would also inherit his property. The Deputy Senate President Ike Ekwaramada supported the bill. He said Nigeria would develop if women were given the same rights as men. Uh, the Senate Majority Leader Alain Dume criticized the bill and urged Nigerians to stick with either religious or traditional marriage. Sunny Yorima, a senator from Zamfara State, condemned the bill, arguing that it was in conflict with the Nigerian constitution. He said the bill negates the principles of the Sharia law, which the constitution recognizes. The bill was defeated when the Senate President Bukola Saraki voted to vote. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant and General Tukoburatai, says he is confident that Boko Haram will be eliminated in Nigeria as troops fighting insurgents in the northeast are doing so with utmost commitment and renewed zeal. He gave the assurance on Tuesday at the office of the Ohio State Governor during his one-day familiarization tour of the two division of Nigerian Army at the Kunle Fajui Cantonment of Dogbo in Ibado. According to Buratai, the intensity of the onslaught against terrorism has been increased and this has resulted in the noticeable reduction of attacks in the region. Although it may seem unending to many Nigerians who have had to cope with the consequences of the Boko Haram terror, he added that the military was committed to ending the insurgency. And the former Nigerian Minister of Petroleum Resources, Mrs. Tiaciani, Alessina Madweke, has vehemently denied stories that her sister has a kid for former President Goodluck Jonathan. She debunked this story in London while responding to questions from the CEO of Ovation magazine, Mr. Dele Momodu. Mr. Madweke strongly noted that it is totally untrue as she has no such sister or relative. She wondered how people could fabricate such blatant lies. The former Nigerian Petroleum boss is currently undergoing extensive cancer treatment in London. And on the foreign scene, France has said it will deploy a paramilitary police force in the capital of Burkina Faso to react quickly in the event of the new attacks by Islamic militants in West Africa. The move comes two days after gunmen opened fire at the Ivory Coast Beach Resort, killing 18 people, including four French citizens. Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb said it carried out the assault. 
militants have also launched attacks in Burkina Faso and Mali recently. French Interior Minister Bernard Cazeneuve made the announcement on his visit to Abidjan to show France's support for Ivory Coast. He was joined by Foreign Minister Jean-Marc Ayrault. There, they visited some of the wounded from Sunday's attack on the Grand Bassam Resort, the first jihadist attack in Ivory Coast and the third in the region since November. And very interestingly, still on the foreign scene, at the front row in the Republican presidential nomination race, Donald Trump won a decisive victory in the key state of Florida, but lost to John Kashuk in Ohio. Democratic front runner Hillary Clinton extended her lead with wins in Florida, Ohio, Illinois, and North Carolina. Meanwhile, Macarubio dropped out of the Republican race after losing in his home state of Florida to Mr. Trump. The billionaire has also won in Illinois and North Carolina. His victories cause a headache for the Republican Party because many senior members are concerned by his policies and tone. Mr. Trump will need just over half of the hundreds of delegates remaining to win a majority in the Republican race and assure him of the nomination. Five big states so far on Tuesday chose their preferred candidates for November's presidential election. And in sports, Manuel Pellegrini believes Manchester City are well positioned to go further in the Champions League after seeing them reach the quarterfinals. City will be in the draw for the last eight for the first time on Friday after a nil nil draw with Dinamo Kiev at the Etihad Stadium, which gave them a 3 1 aggregate win in the round of 16. Pellegrini praised his players for ensuring they will continue their European campaign into April despite the uninspired nature of their stalemate. PSG, Wolfsburg, Benfica, Atletico Madrid and Real Madrid are already through while two from Barcelona, Arsenal, Bayern Munich and Juventus will join them on Wednesday. Some teams represent more favourable position than others but that is not Warren Pellegrini as he said he will have he has confidence regardless of who his team is paired with. And these are the stories we're tracking for you coming from African Free Press Television this morning. For more please do log on to our website at www.africanfreepress.com. Follow us on Twitter at African Free Press. Like our Facebook page at AfricanFreePress.com. Do join us in our discussions on various interesting topics at African Free Press Forum and subscribe to our YouTube channel at African Free Press. My name is Leo Oketa. Do have a good day.